This begins a new chapter, which is chapter 8, which is referred to as user written functions. In the previous chapter, we surveyed some of the built in functions to R, and those include things like square root and mean and standard deviation. And there are hundreds and hundreds of these functions that are out there in R that are available for your use. But occasionally, you will want a function that is not built into R. And that is what the topic of this chapter is. Basically, these are custom functions that you want for a particular purpose. The syntax here is function name, and then a left parenthesis, argument one, argument two, etc. So you call a user written function in exactly the same fashion that you call a built-in function. If you ever want to see the source code for a function, all you have to do is type its name and you will see that source code. The third thing, the function and the name, I'm sorry, the function name and its argument are both case sensitive. Fourth, a call to a function has arguments listed by position or name. So you can put arguments in the same position, and R will know what those arguments mean. Or you can actually put a name in there if you'd like, and that's fine too. Many functions have default arguments. And we've seen that, for example, with the sort function. It will sort items in an ascending fashion unless you put override the uh, decreasing uh, argument. And finally, there are certain user written names to avoid. Examples of those are C, which you know is used to create a vector. The Q is the quit function. T is for transpose. If and while will be used when we get to programming. There already is a square root function, so you probably don't want to use that as you are uh, setting up your own functions. So I'm going to start out with an example here, and I'm going to name this function cube. So the first thing I'm going to do is type in cube and see if there already is a function for cubing an argument. And there is not. So that allows me to write a cube function. And here is the syntax for writing the cube function. You say cube is equal to a function. And it's going to have a single argument x. And what it will do is simply cube whatever it finds. And so the cube function is written. And you can see in the upper right here, it says there is now something called cube. It is a function. And it has a single argument x. Let's test cube by putting a 2 in there. So we're calling the function cube, which we have written. It didn't exist before. Putting a 2 in it as an argument. And it'll return an 8. Let's try cubing, say, 5. That'll give us 125. Let's try cubing 10. And we'll get 1,000. So it seems to be working fine. We could say, how about sending it an, a vector? What will it do if we send it the uh, vector 1 through 10? And it does just fine. It will return a vector, and it will have the first 10 perfect cubes out there. We could also send cube a matrix. And let's see how it does with that. Let's say we have a matrix. And that matrix will contain the numbers 1 through 8. And furthermore, it will have two rows and four columns. In this case, once again, it does fine. It returns a matrix, which is, again, two rows and four columns. And here is one cubed, here is two cubed, three cubed, four cubed, etc. So that is a first function named cube. And if you want to check what the mode of cube is, it will tell you that it's now a function. This is the first time we've seen that, but it tells you um, that that it is not a vector, it is not a matrix, it is not an array. In this case, cube happens to be a function. Let's push the broom here, sweep that out, and let's write another function. 
This one I want to be hypotenuse, so let me check and see if there is anything out there named hype. And it'll say there's nothing out there named hype. There's another way of doing this. You can ask the question, does there exist something named, is there a something named hype? And it will tell you, no, there's nothing out there named hype for hypotenuse. So this function we're going to put on a couple of lines. So start out by saying hype is a function and it's going to have two parameters A and B and these will be the, the length of the legs of the two matrices. And unfortunately I got both an open and a close there from our studio so I'm going to go back and redo it with only an open and you'll see it'll give me the continuation prompt here. Now the reason I'm going to do this on several lines is just to illustrate, first of all, we've got two arguments, but we can also do this in several different pieces. So I'm going to set a variable named temp equal to a squared plus b squared. Now one thing you're going to notice is temp does not appear up here in the upper right hand corner. And the reason for that is temp is called a local variable and it will be known within the function hype but it will not be known outside of hype. Then what we want to do is we want to return the square root of temp. Now R has the assumption that the last thing that is computed is the thing that will get returned by the function. So temp will not get returned here, but the square root of temp will get returned. Finally, you can see I'm still in the continuation mode. The way I end the hype function for hypotenuse is I match this curly brace with a curly brace here, and at that point we'll be done writing temp, and it will return you to the usual caret prompt. So at this point, if I were to type hype for hypotenuse, it will show me the source code and this is the source code exactly as I keyed it in. Hype is a function. It has two arguments, A and B. The opening curly brace begins the function. I always put two spaces in here and if you put four spaces in, that's fine. Some people use two, some use four but my two spaces here are indenting which is saying I'm inside of the hype function. I'm inside of these curly braces here. My first statement is to calculate a squared plus b squared and put that into a temporary variable named temp and then the second step is to take the square root of that and that will be the, ver the value that is returned by hype. So let's try hype with two parameters Let's try three and four. And that's a three, four, five right triangle, so it will return a hypotenuse of five. We could have also put in four comma three, and that would have worked fine. We could put in a hypotenuse. What hypotenuse corresponds to five and 12? And there's the five, 12, 13 triangle. You could also say, what is the hypotenuse of a triangle with legs of length one and one. Well, in this case, it will have a hypotenuse, which is the square root of two, and that gets returned. Let's do one more thing. What happens if hypotenuse is thrown two different, or let's go with three different legs. Let's say three, four, and six as the first argument of vector, and 1, 2, and 9 as the second argument. Well, in this case, it does return three hypotenuses, and here they are. If you have lengths 3 and 1, the hypotenuse will be the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared, which is 10. Square root of 10 is 3.16. If you have legs of length 4 and 2, 4 squared is 16, 2 squared is 4, 16 plus 4 is 20, and so here is 
the square root of 20. Likewise, if you have legs of length 6 and 9, it will calculate the hypotenuse as 10.8. So that's a first look at user written functions. The next topic will be scoping.